Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I could never stop saying my hallelujah. Before I do anything, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I said, I said, thank you, Jesus, for waking me up. And I say, hallelujah. I'm giving God my glory. Hallelujah. Because it's all that I have. And without God, I will never be anything. And I'm going to say over and over all my life, God has been there for me. I remember the first time, my first child, when I found out that I was expecting, I was so excited, calling everybody, my mom, my dad, everybody I can call, and they say, I'm expecting. And while I was excited calling, and I can hear a voice say to me, you need to start praying, you need to start fasting. And I was younger at the time, come in the morning until mid, until 12, where I would know out and nothing extra time. So I was praying, and I continued praying for my daughter. I didn't even know what was going to happen. Is it a daughter or a son? Or I don't know. But I, thought I was praying for my child. And guess what? Nine months like this. The day I went to the hospital to give birth to my child, two days later, not even the nurse. She was, a, she was doing her residency. She was a student nurse. And my daughter was so beautiful. My little princess, still beautiful. The black mom. Yes. Hallelujah for that. She got my beauty, yes. And so the nurse said to me, when I was ready to leave, the doctor already checked me, checked, me, checked my daughter out, everything, and we're about to leave. And I went to the nurse and I said, I just wanted to thank you. It's always good sometimes to say thank you to people when they do something, little thing for you. That was a job, but I feel like the care she was giving me, she deserved a special work and to say thank you. So I said, thank you for taking care of my beautiful princess and I'm about to leave. And she looked at my daughter, but that was God. That's the way God talk. She looked at my daughter and she said, Excuse me, you cannot leave right now. You cannot leave. You cannot go because your daughter is in danger. And I said, What are you talking about? My daughter is in danger. This is fine. This is a black girl. You know, when they're born, they don't stay the same color. And she said, No, that's not what I'm talking about. Her color is pale. She's the same baby that I saw two days ago. Something wrong with her baby. And let me handle it. And the doctor who just checked me out was across the next room. And she called the doctor. And the doctor came and she said, Look at the baby. And the doctor said, Nothing wrong with the baby. They're ready to go. He said, No, this baby cannot leave this hospital. You got to do something. And I was like, In my heart, who's the doctor? Who's the nurse? And this is a student nurse who's not even uh, and yet who's not even graduated yet. And she was telling the doctor what to do. But that was my angel. God sent her as an angel. And that was God. And when the doctor looked at the baby, he said, But what do you want me to do? The baby's fine. The doctor asked him, the student nurse what to do. And I was just like in my heart, woman, doctor, I need to go home so I can enjoy my baby at home. And all my people are waiting, ma'am. Everybody's waiting. All of them I have not seen the baby yet. This is my first child. They want to say hi, let me go home. And the doctor may say, shh, please don't test. You got to send ASAP. Get the test done right away. It tests for blue, man. It tests for jaundice. You know, when back kids got jaundice, if they don't know you have it, it's hard to tell. And you know jaundice can be treated, but it can kill too, especially when you do not know. So, and when they took the baby, meanwhile, I was just like in my mind, I don't know whether I was in the top, in the bottom. I could not even walk because I was having a lot of problems, first child, and they gave me a period and I could not walk. After that, I was going with a walker home. Can you imagine that? A walker. I was walking out with it. I was planning, they were planning to let me go home with it because I could not walk because of the pain. And the baby was supposed to be in the seventh floor. And they pick up the baby, and the nurse told me we're going in seventh floor to get what we need to get done. I didn't even know how did I get there. One thing that I know, I was in the seventh floor, and with that baby, I don't know what happened to the walker. So when I get there, the doctor said they pushed me out. They said you can't even be in here. They were supposed to put her in twelve lights. They put her in thirty-six long blue lights, a little sunglasses on her face little something on the top of her eye, yes, naked, no diaper, and the baby was not eating before I was trying to breastfeed her, and the baby was laying in that, whatever you call it, and I was just like, Jesus, and I can hear in my voice say to me, you already prayed, you did what I asked you to do, 
So when you hear the voice of the Lord, He tells you to pray, to do something, stop asking questions, do it. Because God has a reason. He has a reason for telling me when to do something. He knew at that time I wasn't going to have energy, time to even call my mom to pray. He knew that I wasn't going to have time to call my pastor to pray. Because I was going through a lot. But He made me pray before that. So now, when I was nervous, worried, He said, Michelle, Michelle, you pray that way, your baby is going to be all right. So when I got there, the doctor said, in 30 minutes, in 30 minutes, we put it on the 30, that's all we're going to do, the light treatment. In 30 minutes, if your bilirubin does not go lower, we're going to do blood transfusion. Meaning that, we're going to take all the red blood cells out, red mouth, everything, clean it out, give it. I was just like a mom, what? That's mean my baby going to dip in and the rest of her life and transfusion. And I knew that. And I said, in Jesus' name, that's not going to happen. And the doctor looked at me like I was crazy. And I was acting crazy. And I said, in Jesus' name, that's not going to happen. God's going to do a miracle for me. He already done a miracle. And the rest of the doctor like, you need to get her out. Get her out. No, I'm not getting out. I got to stay here. But you know what? God sent another angel, another doctor came and said, it's okay, let her stay. That's a fair child. She's nervous, she's worried. Leave her alone, let her stay. And they started treating me with a little respect, you know, let me stay. And my Bible, never leave my Bible. My Bible was here with me at the hospital. I pulled my Bible out. I didn't even know what I was reading, but I can feel the release. I said, relax, I'm taking care of your child. This child is not yours, Michelle, it's mine. I knew her before she was born. I knew her before I knew about her. I'm going to take care of her. And I can hear that, so I feel a little bit this. And less than 30 minutes, they check the, the, uh, the little villain, the Bill Rubin. Excuse me for my accent, remember? When they check her, Bill Rubin, the miracle happened. If you don't believe in miracle, it's happened. Miracle does happen, and it's happened all the time. And God still do miracle as we are talking right now. You just have to believe Him. You just have to trust God. You just have to know, in spite of everything you want in your life, you know the Lord. He's there. You can listen. And when you call up in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah! You ask for forgiveness for your sins. He will answer. He will interfere in your behalf. He will go to God in your behalf and talk for you. He did it for me. He can do it for you. My daughter, Billy Rubin, went down as a live with a couldn't expect it. And the doctor were around, were giving me a hard time. And the other doctor said, let her say, he says, you see, she was right. Look at what happened, what Jesus done for her. Look at that, what happened to the baby. Everything going to be fine. But we're going to keep her under the therapy, under the lights for a few days. And we promise you soon you'll go home. And as a result of that, he told me, you can stay in the room at the hospital for free. We don't have to charge you, get food, everything. And God sent this angel out to watch my baby. He sent angel out to help me out to where I was there. God is great. He's wonderful. Now, my daughter never had any problem again. So now they told me from now on, every time expecting a child, we have to do that at the beginning. All your children will still have jaundice. But we knew about it. They know about it. They can do something at the beginning to prevent what would happen. And you know what happened? The doctor told me if I'd left the hospital that moment and step even in the lobby, my daughter was about to die. Can you believe this? Today, I only have one daughter and two sons. I will have not given my daughter today. My biology, I have a lot of daughters, a lot of children, but my biological one that I'm talking about. So God is really good. God is awesome. He's wonderful. He's great. He is the same God yesterday and today and forever. He still does miracles every day. All you have to do, trust God, believe on Him, and know that you're not alone. And He will never let you alone. If you don't have Jesus Christ as your Savior today, and I'm inviting, you, I'm inviting you to have a relationship with Jesus. This is Jesus will always be there with you. There was a time in your life you will be alone. But you will not be alone. Physically, you will feel like you're alone. But you will not be alone. It's angel. He will be there. And Jesus, it says prayer. 
and he can still do anything he wants to do all you have to do is trust him believe him and whatever you want to in your life give it to him he will take care of it he take care of my daughter he took care of me he did that miracle for me even though i don't deserve it he did it for me my daughter was fine and so all the little complication came later on after that he took care of everything so jesus is the reason that i'm saying hallelujah because i know the kind of relationship i have with him and i know when i say hallelujah what does that mean you can call me the hallelujah lady if you want it doesn't bother me and i'm so proud of it and public everywhere i go i should talk about my jesus hallelujah oh he saved my life my children's life and all he has done for me and i know soon again i'm coming up to give you another testimony and little by little you will know who queen michelle is and why queen michelle always had to say hallelujah i am not crazy my mind is there it's straight it's just like sometime in your life you have to that's all god wanted that's all god wants when he done something for you just give him praise and the glory and let him know that he, he he did it for you and if you are watching you're listening just remember whatever you're going to you're not alone he can still hear you he's listening to you you don't have to see him you don't have to hear him he might not talk to you in a small voice but he'll fire with this in someone in your way to talk to you to advise you to give you the guidance that you need but jesus is well he is a good man he is the center of my life he's the best thing that ever happened to me because he answers my prayers although i don't deserve it but he still answers my prayer and he still go with me every day and this is the reason i can sit again hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful evening you blessed me with. In 2020, this is my testimony. I will tell you all. All my testimonies of God has done for me. I have to let you know that. I'm not going to stop. You can make comments. You can share. You can like. Don't forget, it's Queen Michelle.